Yeah, since uh, I stopped this the stream, the credits are still rolling. <laughs> so we're going to skip it. We got a cutscene. So, best to buy mortals in their attempt to initiate the eighth rejoining. That they should be so complacent. And now it falls to me to deal with the consequences. Without intervention, the balance between light and darkness will begin to shift, placing our mission in jeopardy. Hydaelyn's champion has grown too strong. His might encroaches upon the realm of gods. Equilibrium must needs be restored. The time has come for you and yours to join the fray. Warrior of Darkness. Remind me, why is there no rest for the righteous? Because they care, Master Garland. Of all the things they could have picked to play with, that's not a toy, you bloody fools! It's a primal! Fires of deception crumbled to dust. The lay bare truths long concealed. Beyond the shimmering shadow lieth shimmering light. We have full time. So what the hell just happened? Uh, hard to say because. It's not part of the main story quest. <laughs> that big thing is known as Alexander. It is a series of eight-man raids. Very short little instances. 
but there's a lot of them um, in and it, it's mentioned a little bit in uh, in a realm of born uh, where there's a series of raids regarding what's referred to as the binding coil of Bahamut which Alphino's sister Alize uh, is exploring and, and everything the difficulty of that is referred to as savage uh, it wasn't listed as savage at the time mainly because uh, I, I don't think they had that nomenclature or what have you well in heaven's word they uh changed that to make it a little more accessible uh so they so initially they have normal version uh a less difficult to live, basically what i would call a raid, fi raid finder content if you wow uh, so you can actually, um, I keep looking up there when it's, you're there. Um, so it, it allows it that people can go through this story about Alexander. It's much more accessible. They can go in, basically do a quest. Uh, you get access to the first part of the raid. And the raid is, it's, Honestly, it's more like a trial than anything. Um, some Sometimes you have to you beat through some trash before you get to the actual boss, but sometimes you pop in and you've got the boss. Maybe you have to travel through something to get to a boss or something like that. It is compared to like an LFR raid in, in WoW. Um, it's only eight man for one thing. And two, it's, there's basically one boss, maybe some trash, but just one boss. So it's very similar to that of a trial. So I'm not sure if calling it a raid really is apropos. Um, you also have like the Crystal Tower uh, in A Realm of Born with the Lion's Raids, which is more, is it, which is closer to that of a WoW LFR raid because Instead of being just an 8-man, it's a 24-man. Well, WoW is more like 25 to 30. Um, but unlike that, you're it's basically three 8-man parties. You're separate parties. But you can interact. Uh, healers on one can res healers on another, or characters on another. In general, you're only 8-man parties. It's it's a fun raid series, and actually, uh, Alexander uh, has some really fun music to it, and a neat little little story to go along along it. But it is not the main story quest, which is, which for this stream the priority is the main story quest. We're we're pounding through it, trying to stay on monk as much as possible, because the original goal was to just do monk, but then I. I <laughs> uh, wasted some of the XP on uh, other classes. That's okay. After long years of estrangement, Ishgard rejoins her sister nations in the Alliance. Word cannot well express my joy. None of this will be even possible without you, my friend. Change is coming to Eorzea, though it is inevitably bringing bring with it a measure of upheaval. Hard work, peace, and prosperity are sure to follow. And yet, even as we look forward to the coming of a new age, we must needs be wary of old threat. The lords of Gallimond have not relinquished their claim upon Eorzea, and we should be forced to contend with them again ere long. And then there is the matter of our com comrade, the Stinian, claimed body and soul by Nidhogg. If there is a way to rescue him, we must find it. Suffice it to say, the path ahead holds no shortage of challenges. Together, we shall overcome them.
Fortuitous timing is always as it goes. Taru is about to brief me on the search for our missing comrades. If you would be so kind, then. Absolutely. We are free pleased to hear that Royal and his men have been making excellent progress. You remember how Flamen uh, helped me to escape the Crystal Braves in Dimsa Lamenta, only to then disappear? Well, according to Royal, she crept aboard a ship bound for Ratsahan, where she's been hiding ever since. He assures me that it won't be long before we're reunited. As for Ida and Papalimo, the remains of their link pearls have been found, and in Pearl Lane of all places. Royal thinks they must have disposed of them after escaping from the Royal Promenade. Yes, that would make sense. They could not risk being eavesdropped upon by a bison. Well, but certain they fled the city shortly after, though we still don't have a clue where they went. I see. And what of Thancred and Minfilia? I'm afraid there's nothing new to share on those fronts, but it's not all doom and gloom. The good news is we've enlisted the services of a Shralian scholar, one of the students of Baltessian, to aid in the, the search. Search. Who would be arriving any day now? The students, you say? I should very much like to meet this scholar, if time permits. But first we must attend to a more pressing matter. But Emmerich has summoned the two of us for a private audience. The messenger did not specify what he wished to discuss, only that it was urgent. Assuming you have no objections, Eskos, I suggest we proceed to the congregation forthwith. And may Hapu will meet with the scholar afterwards. Agreed? In that case, I think I will return to the Forgotten Knight for now. Things are liable to fall apart if I'm gone too long, you know? Go see Sir Emmerich. And lag. Oh, bollocks. There we are. I bet we still have lag, though. We don't have the music, and there should be a quest giver, like, right around here. As well as a couple other people, especially some guards at the the congregation of our knights, most holy. At least the door is open. Oh! Hey, I get to see a Lollafell summoner. With her a free edgy. Or his. Okay. I think it's it. Yeah, I think it's me. I could be wrong. Hard to tell. But I need to talk to the guy that's like standing right here. Unfortunately, because of reasons. Yeah. Like, I can check my Aether cards. I can't see anything. Or how are you all doing? Uh, Bears and Dragons later today. Um, I'll probably have to try to find a, a good stopping point because I need to make dinner and then I need to continue writing cutscene. Um, strangely enough, uh, I think we're at the point, at least for this partial, this mini adventure. It's. There's cutscene. A lot of it is me telling the story about some things that happened. Hopefully, there's. So. Yeah, 
Well, we got music. Let's start. Nope. I, that, it spoke too soon. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no good way. Like, if, if I was in WoW, I would go that. Oh, there we go. So, uh, Giovanni and Hinterlands, they still haven't gotten flight yet. I'm still working on that. Uh, but everywhere else, I've got uh, flight. The Lord Commander is then. Pray proceed, sir. Leg is over. For now. Thank you for coming. I wish to speak with you both in a place where privacy was assured. We quite understand. What was it that you wished to discuss? With my father's passing, the seat of the Archbishop lies vacant. And so, in accordance with canon law, I have assumed his responsibilities. I should stress that this is a temporary measure. It was never intended that the Lord Commander of the Temple Knights serve in this capacity indefinitely. Quite the opposite. The statutes specify that I should surrender my powers as soon as a conclave of the senior clergy and the high houses have named a new Archbishop. But in light of recent events, that would not seem appropriate. I confess I did not expect you to divulge quite so much quite so soon. The details of the Archbishop's plans, perhaps, but the true origin of the war and all it entails? I, too, had concerns. But when the Warrior of Light is witnessed returning to the capital upon the back of a dragon, one's options are rather limited. Mayhap I could have concealed certain details, but for how long? And at what risk? Should the truth have come to light in the meantime, how would the people have viewed my silence? After a thousand years of lies and secrecy, I could not well abuse their trust and hope to be believed. The time for deception has passed. I only wish the people agreed. That some would deny the truth I had anticipated, but not this many. And among the few who acknowledged that my father had to be stopped, no small number questioned our methods. If they suspect a coup, it will not be long before some turn to violence. It has already begun, and that on both sides. Men and women of the cloth are being harassed in the streets. Some have even been assaulted in the broom. Hilda and her people have formed a watch to help us maintain order. But such measures will not prevent the unrest from spreading. For all our talk of peace, the people remain frightened and confused. For their sake, we must bring the Dragonsong War to a definitive end. And we should be glad to help you, Sir Emmerich. But what precisely would you have us do? We wish to treat with the dragons of Annex Trine. To that end, I would trouble you for an escort and an introduction. Annex Trine? You would speak with Vidofnir then? We must needs open a dialogue between our peoples. Acting as my representative, Lucia will extend an invitation to their leader that she might visit us here in Ishgard. Were she still with us, I would of course have beseeched Isel's assistance in this matter. But as she is not, I must ask that you aid us in her stead. Will you do us this favor? Thank you, my friends. Lucia, I leave the rest to you. In the wake of the Archbishop's fall, the nation of Ishgard trembled, the faith of her people shaken to its very core.
For a thousand years had they fought and died, certain of the justice of their cause, only to be told that their holy war was born of the sins of their forefathers. What then for those brave men and women, thus stripped of their righteousness but to despair, to deny the truth and decry its speakers? And what then for those whom they defamed but to hope on, to have faith in a brighter tomorrow? A tomorrow in which man and dragon might live together in harmony, then as distant as the very stars in the heavens. Yet while we dared to hope, deep within his lair the enemy lay, gathering his strength. Nidhogg, now possessed of his two eyes and the body of the Azure Dragoon, prizes to which he had laid claim at the very hour of the hero's triumph. solace of peace, the great worm craved the misery of war, nor was he alone in his misbegotten desire. I love the Count's narration. It was so well written. It's so good. I don't know where I'm looking. I got a camera right there to speak to you. But this is fourth wall or what have you. I know little of the lands these dragons call home. This annex trine. But had you not agreed to escort me to the coming journey, would seem a far more daunting prospect. I confess, I myself once shuddered at the thought of it, yet even the longest journeys begin with the first steps. Ah, but ere we set forth, Essegos and I must needs inform our comrades of the plans. Very well, I shall see to my preparations. Then let us go and bid farewell to Tataru. To Tataru. Essegos. Unfortunately, she's in the Forgotten Night, which is right next door. Okay. Well, you're honest. So, what was your secret meeting all about? I'm all ears. Diplomatic mission to Annex Trine, you say? Well, I suppose that does take precedence. But should your meeting with Vodolfnia happen to end early, you might consider from the room with Yashola and Adelshire, you'll be there to receive our guest. Don't get me wrong, our meeting with the dragons is terribly important and everything, but this scholar just happens to be time permitting, as I said. I'll endeavor to join Yushtola if we cannot pray pass on our regards. And this office, I guess, we have, we have kept the first commander waiting long enough. Ready then? Good, so am I. Path is long, but uh, known to us. From Falcon's Nest, we will cross across. We will cross the Western Islands and make for Tailfeather in the Ravani Forelands. There, we can stop to rest and replenish our supplies. Questions? Not. Then the stables wait. I can skip things and go directly to Tail Feather. <laughs> oh, 
I'm out. I've always imagined that the first time I set foot upon Dravadian soil I will be the head of an army, but here I am, ready to treat with brothers and sisters of my name. Full well do I know how difficult it can be to set aside the past, though it was I who first proposed recruiting Yazelle for her cause. I questioned the wisdom of my words almost as soon as I had uttered them, but for a long time, and for a long time after that. Here was a woman with the blood of innocence on her hands, men, women, children, all slain in the name of the implacable Lady Isaac. Yet she acknowledged her misdeed and agreed to join us in common cause. At our side, she fought and serviced the greater good, even until her dying breath. And while that does not absolve her of her sins, I, I hope that one day she will be remembered not merely as a heretic, but a misguided soul who dreamt for peace. Who asked much? Master Alf now. Yet, who can say what uh, might come to pass should I negotiate their fruit? Yes, of course. You must press on to Annex Shrine, if you'll follow me. Then just teleport from here, or do you... Fight with the young means was impressive. Watch close. Oh, uh, I'm talking to the one, wrong one. I'll take care of that later. <laughs> it's fine, guys. Thou art ever welcome here, friend of Yazel. On this one, I do not know. They forgive us this unannounced visitors, Daltfian. May I present to you Lucia, first commander of the Temple Knights of Ishgard, and our trusted friend. It is my honor to meet you, Vidolfnir. I have come as an envoy of Sir Emmerich, the Lord Commander of the Temple Knights and acting leader of the Holy See. Indeed, may speak knight. For 1,000 years, men and dragon have been locked in an endless cycle of bloodshed and sorrow. To our shame, we had long believed our kin to be the, the your kin to be the architects of this war. But now we know the truth: that King Thorden and his knights twelve did willfully betray and murder the great Worm Ortoskia. Is it Ortoskia? Shattered, shattering the peace between our people. For 1,000 years, our leaders conspired to conceal this truth, the truth which was at last bared, laid bare about the warrior of light, the Azure Dracu, and he fell. Alas, a deception so intricately wrought uh, cannot be undone in a moment, and our people labor to accept the truth. After an eternity of war, who would dare to dream that place it could at last be within our grasp? Yet to dream we must, as Yuzel once did. We must make that dream a reality. We humbly beseech you, Vidolfine. Join hands with us in friendship once more, for the eyes of my people in Ishgard. An unexpected invitation. I've heard your request tonight. However, I cannot yet give you my answer. May I ask why? This matter concerneth my sire, he must needs be consulted. Moreover, the Nath grow bold, even as they did before, and I would not leave my people at the mercy of the fall. And we will wait. After a thousand years of war, we shall not give up on peace, for, for want of patience. Ah, fear not, knight. Thou shalt have my answer within thine lifetime. So soon. 
my humble thanks. I shall bear your words to my lord forthwith until we meet again. Even in the circumstances, I would say that went rather well. To be frank, I'm surprised our proposal was not rejected outright. Whether or not will come of it remains to be seen, however. Mayhap I would take this opportunity to speak with some of the other dragons. Ah, uh, but you need not wait for me. The return journey ho holds no fears for me now. Well, if you have no further need of us, we shall continue on to Charmaine. We hope to welcome a scholar who has agreed to aid us in the search for our missing comrades. And I pray your journey is as swift and uneventful as ours was. And thank you again for sparing the time to assist us, even when such grave matters remain unresolved. I can think of no graver matter than a thousand year war, one which our friends give their lives to end it. Suffice it to say, I would willingly make a thousand such journeys to ensure that their sacrifice was not in vain. With that, I have no doubt, Master Alphino. I only hope the fates will not hold you to your work. So it would seem that we have time to greet the scholar after all. How delightful. I shall be interested to hear how she seems how she means to go about finding Miss Ilya and Thancred. I can only assume she is privy to some new investigative technique. In any event, our first order of business is to rendezvous with Yashtola and Adelchai. May not have the uh, accessories yet, but at least have the main main thing. Ghost, it's good to see you. I confess I had assumed your business in an extreme would detain you longer. Good meeting with the Dolph. The go well. As well as can be expected. If she must discuss uh, Theramic's proposal with the Christ Saga, Saga, of course, but she seemed amiable to the suggestion. But about Shari, I guess. Has she arrived yet? She has. And But when I explained that you would be joining us, she asked if she might use the intervening time to explore. I agreed to meet, meet her outside on the front bridge. We should be on our way.
terribly, terribly sorry to have kept you all waiting. You need not apologize. We arrived but a moment ago ourselves. Pray, allow me to introduce Kral, who has recently come from the Charlian motherland. She has generously offered to assist us. Oh, please, think nothing of it. A trip to Eorzea was long overdue. You must be the warrior of light. Yes, you certainly do look the part. <laughs> A pleasure to meet you at last, sir. And who is that I spy but young Alpha No Levier himself? I dare say someone's grown an ill or two in my absence. Or are those lifts in your boots? <laughs> we, um... <clears throat> Miss Croyle and I met at the studium years ago. I shall forever be indebted to her for her sage guidance. It was no small task keeping him out of trouble, believe you me. The youngest ever to enter the studium, him and his sister, 11-year-old prodigies. Suffice it to say, social graces were not among his list of talents. Striding up to his seniors on his first day, head held high. What was it he said again? Thank you, Kryl. For what? <laughs> I haven't finished yet. <coughs> Would you care to attempt a more dexterous deflection? Um. <clears throat> Mayhap we should save this delightful conversation for a more fitting occasion, when pressing matters do not demand our undivided attention. <laughs> a bit Hello, much, Carl. but better. I can tell you have been putting your skills to use here in Eorzea. Henceforth, I trust you will dazzle me with your eloquence at the first time of asking. <laughs> right, on to more pressing matters. Finding Minfilia and the other missing scions. I gather you have new information to share with us. A new approach, actually. Tataru recounted the tale of your escape, and it gave me an idea. Simply put, assuming Thancred left some manner of trail when you whisked him away, as is almost always the case with teleportation magics, I am confident I can find and follow it. Then what are you waiting for? The wherewithal to do it. The fact is, my abilities aren't quite up to the task. Not in themselves, anyway. If I had Master Matoya's crystal eye, on the other hand... Then let us all call on her forthwith. I think it best that you explain your plan to her in person. In, uh, taking care of this earlier. I think I started to, but then I went back to Elagos on him. These are over in the other quarter. Hmm. Oh, no, I, I didn't put that in. That's work. They're coming through, we're just going to stick in the streets. Oh. 
you could probably refer to as three. I'm only gonna stream for about another hour. say you were headed for a cave, did you not? Because I certainly don't see a cave nearby. You must have told you meeting us on the way or something. I have heard many stories of Master Matoya. <clears throat> Some quite flattering, others less so. Let's assure they are all true. This way, I have care. That trouble I smell? Or did you forget to wipe your boots on the way in? Forgive us, Master Matoya. We will be sure to wipe them on the way out. And may I say how glad I am that age has not yet deprived you of your senses. Ever so quick-witted, aren't we? To the detriment of your manners. Well, out with it then. What do you want? Pray, allow me to introduce myself, Master Matoya. I am Kryle, of the students of Baldessian. I hope you will excuse our unannounced visit. Baldessian, you say? Ah, oh, yes. The old coot set up shop on the Isle of Val, didn't he? Regrettably, our Order's headquarters and the Isle itself were obliterated by a magic of immense power. I have the blessing of light to thank for my own preservation. Kryl, you too possess the Echo. Well, yes, of course I do. Our order is devoted to uncovering the mysteries of Hydaelyn and interpreting her will, particularly through the study of her gift to us. It was in the course of these studies that I met and subsequently befriended Minfilia. She and I have rather a lot in common. I had no idea. You weren't supposed to. Not that I wanted to deceive you, you understand. But precautions had to be taken. Yes, yes, that's all well and good. But you still haven't told me why you're here. The students of Baldessian are gone. And there is naught I can do to change that. But the science of the Seventh Dawn can yet be restored, and my dear friend found. You have in your possession an ancient crystal of light, one you call your crystal eye. I believe I can use it to focus my abilities and locate one of the missing scions. And there I was, thinking you might want to make use of my years of experience. Oh, wait here.
Long did I ponder the nature of this crystal and its familiar radiance. But never did I suspect it was a crystal of light. On the cusp of an umbral calamity, souls blessed with the power of the Echo invariably appear. To aid these, her chosen warriors, Hydaelyn bequeaths to each a slither of her strength in the form of a crystal of light. I have six of them. But as her strength wanes, so too does the potency of her gifts. This crystal, born of an earlier era, is infused with a power far greater than those of this age. You could travel the length and breadth of the land and not find a crystal even a fraction as pure. Its value is beyond measure, as are the risks inherent in its use. No two manifestations of the Echo are alike. I, for example, can converse with beings of every shape and size, excepting beasts, contrary to what others would have you believe. Language has nothing to do with it, of course. Rather, I am sensitive to the whispers of the soul, their intent, their very essence even, the traces of which serve to guide the elementals to Yishtola. Far-fetched though it may sound, I believe that with your crystal eye, I may be able to pick up where they left off and follow the remaining trail to Thancred. That is, if I have your permission. Well, the poor sod's not going to find himself. So, as long as you don't drop it or take it out of my sight, you may do with it what you will. Thank you, Master Matoya. Then let us begin. Hunters of Tailfeather know those lands well. I say we begin our search there. Go outside if I can teleport from inside. Why well, I find myself in an unfamiliar wilderness? My first instinct would be to seek out signs of civilization. Ordinarily, perhaps, but this. But in his wounded state, he may not have wished to risk contact with strangers and unknown elites. Yet even had Thancred chosen to remain the force, the hunter would surely have stumbled across his feet. Tailfeather doesn't strike me as an isolated outpost. Merchants and traders pass through reasonably regularly. Do they not? In which case, we need to provide a more detailed description when we question them. Do not cry, though. I've already prepared several sketches of Thancred for that very purpose. This is impressive. You drew this from memory? A skill I acquired some years ago for reasons I no longer remember. I propose to split into two pairs. Yashola and I will inquire at the outlying encampments, while Eskis and 
trial, question the residents of Tailfeather. Afterwards, we shall regroup near Lost Lost S. Lost and share our findings. Assuming there are no objections, just be at it. My, he certainly has matured, has he? Hard to imagine he was once a boy who practiced drawing for hours to impress young ladies. Anyway, we must best get started. Find me when you finish making your round. Did you find a friend of yours? Let's have a look then. Hmm, no, I ain't seen him around, sorry. Got there, sketch. Hmm, can't say I know the face. You say he's uh, something of a warrior. Hmm. I heard you tell the other day about a Huron vagabond who brought down a bender snatch by himself and style. Late night, I like he was dancing with the beast like it was a bell tune ball. Sound like your man. Yep, that's on like sacred. I hear a man, not exactly rare, you know. But... Didn't spy this one bloke a while back. You can get a good look at his face, but I couldn't see the truth. It was beyond the forest, as I recall, on the river to the west of Tailfeather. I remember thinking he wasn't much of a hunter. The lad was making no effort to cover his tracks. See, that and he was carrying an axe as a bow. In that case, I think we've learned everything we can here. Let's see what the others have found out. Of course, I didn't hop on Midgord's and hop on my trip, but that's fine. to the wrong thing. Oh well, we'll just, we'll just do this quickly. I've never seen Father so excited. I pray you're ready. Feed our father. I'm sorry to have doubted your strength before. Will you take it? <laughs> Will you take him the scale? He is likely returned to the lower tower to rest.
Mm, fine, well, expected nothing less. Ah, scale from Comcore. How thoughtful. The magic within our scales can grant healing. It seems our battle gave him cause to worry, but it seems mostly good to grave. Flashing claw with steel, matching wit with the worthy opponent. Few days long past, duly midnight sort for sport. The thrill of combat is not easily forgotten. Now that, it, now that I have uh, taken care of getting rid of that thing that was throwing me off. That's a wrap. For good measure, I am going to switch you. Because I feel flying on a chocobo not as uh, fulfilling as uh, flying on a dragon. My apologies, Father Nate Revival will be thought it wise to question as many hunters for good. Many have been camped in accessible locations, ideal for hunting game, not so receiving visitors. Nevertheless, all time proved well spent. There are soon countless sightings for an exceptionally capable hero and hunter whom no one is familiar. Though none's a chance to see the man's face, his type and built to match and could subscription, as does his fighting prowess. So we have heard the tales. Be that as may, we have yet to find the conclusive proof. Perhaps it's unrelated, but I heard a curious tale regarding our vast trader. He came to Tailfeather in search of garments fit for a man of refinement, which seemed a rather curious subscription for one of its kind. No implying that Sam could send a vast market instead. How would he go himself? Well, if you recall, you yourself emerged from the live stream as naked as your name day. It is a scene I shall never forget. Is it? Uh, well, I'm pleased to see you. I mean, it, it was a simple statement of fact. It stands to reason that Sam could find himself in the same predicament. In any case, if he had dealings with the Vath, he should be able to tell us. No? Right, right. Quile? Quile? Right, right. Now, what are we waiting for? For all we know, Thancred could be waiting for us in Vothas Vath. You should go and see the bath right away. Come along, everybody. Come along. Great hunters, we welcome you once more to Loth, Lothas Vath. What do you seek this day? We seek a man, a man of whom we were told that you may have had certain dealings. Magurius, the hunter dire of godly sport and pursue mortal prey? No, no, he is not prey, he is a friend long missing. Good, good, he is a friend of the Vath as well, one of whom we have traded many times. Really? And you're quite certain it was this man? There's no doubt. The flesh and golden skins came to us from some 
Oh, boss, weak. He offered meats and hides in trade. In exchange, we tended his wounds. He brought us much flesh, so skilled the hunter he was. Much flesh, when he asked for garments, we were glad to provide them. Where is he now? Gone to Loth Ask Asnath, not long ago, when you heard the one mine has summoned our guard once more. Ravana has returned? Dolphinir did say the Nath has grown, had grown as before, but what could Thangard hope to accomplish by himself? Honored Elder, yeah, we thank you for your help. Would that we will repay this kindness ere we depart, but we must hasten to our comrade's side. Go, oh, great hunters, less than us claim them as a sacrifice. Thancred, we must hurry! This day, we reclaim the reins of history. This day, we rid ourselves of the Asians forever. Fools playing at heroes, all of you. Is this how you believe you can save your world? We can and we will, Asian. You shall see. Or perhaps you will not. So you are the warrior of light, the savior of Eorzea. It's a wonder you didn't come sooner, what with the primal and all. Lost a step, have we? Have care. The ether moves strangely around him. It would seem we share a common enemy. May happy would tell us who you are. Shall we show them?
Manfred. Not very sporting of you to interrupt, but so be it. Mark well our faces, warrior of light, for we are the warriors of darkness, walkers of a different path, and we shall meet again. Warriors of Darkness? Really? Thancred! Are you all right? Pleasantries can wait. I'd rather not be here when the Nath arrive. Agreed? Suffice it to say, our reunion was not at all as I pictured it. Waiting until the last instant to join the fray. Tis plain you have not lost your appetite for the dramatic. My appetite for the dramatic? Have you forgotten the circumstances of our party? The heroic last stand, the tunnel filling with light, and then... Had I known you intended to use forbidden magics to deliver me to some gods-forsaken wilderness, I would have thanked you in advance. Thank Rid. If nothing else, you might have warned me that I would emerge from the live stream in the altogether. <laughs> Eventually, I managed to fashion knives from some obsidian I found, and set about hunting for meat and hides. Given that I'm not all that skilled in leatherworking, it's probably for the best that I met the Vath before I was reunited with you. So you were the fleshling clothed in skins of whom the storyteller spoke? A description which fit me as ill as the skins themselves. Happily, I was able to trade with the Vath for garments better becoming a man of refinement. From them, I learned of Ravana, and of the great warrior who had once laid him low. And thence did you conclude that were you to track the Primal's movements, it would surely bring you into contact with the Scions once more. It seemed a reasonable assumption. I could think of no one else with your enthusiasm for slaying beastmen gods. Until <laughs> now, that is. Ah, yes. The self-proclaimed warriors of darkness. Tis only fitting that they stand in opposition to the warrior of light, I suppose. I glimpsed the leader's past, if only for a moment. They were confronting a man in black. An Asian, I think. 
If these warriors are capable of doing battle with Asians and Primals both, they must be possessed of powerful protection. Protection not unlike the Echo. Dun, dun, dun. Blessed with the power of the Echo and driven put down primals, despite his declaration that a different path, I struggled to see how their goals conflict with ours. Nor is the is that the only oddity. I find it passing strange that with such exception individuals that have wholly escaped our notice until now, surely you would have heard rumors and attempted to recruit them to our cause. I recall no such ventures, and I would not soon forget their lack. Or would any of us, I think. One of the primary duties was to scour the city-states for pro promising candidates, which is how Thancred found Eskid. Ah, the memories. It seems like only yesterday that you slew your first primal. Speaking of which, I have the distinct impression that it was not the first time that a band of merry men and women had killed a god. I labor to believe that a band of... Uh, the preternaturally gifted adventurers have been traveling the land, slaying primals without our knowledge. It would imply gross negligence of the part. Speculation will avail us not. There is far too much. For the present, we must needs concentrate on what we do know, namely that Lord Vana is no more. Dolphnir must be informed. The news may render her more receptive to Samric's patience. Since you seem to have affairs here well in hand, I shall take my leave. Simply being in the vicinity of this colony is giving me a stinking headache. If you need me, I will. I shall be with Master Matoya. I would beg her assistance with the search for Minfilia. Wait, Minfilia is missing? I thought she escaped with Esagos. I shall explain on the road. Much has happened in our absence. at any find it easier to fly up here the uh I had not thought to see thee again so soon, mortal, if thou speakest the night, though that she hath long since departed for Ishgard. My thanks for Dolphina, but it is not for her that we came. We bring good tidings for you and yours. Lord Ravana, Lord Ravana has been summoned by, who had been summoned by the man, has again been laid low. Truly, once more you mortals have, succeed, have succeeded where mine own kind did fail. Of my deepest thanks. Would that we would take credit. The god fell by another's hands. Another. Revelation upon revelation. Regardless, it is a cause for celebration. The Nath will have no choice but to withdraw. But to another matter, I have tidings for thee. Well, regarding the Ishgardian's invitation. As promised, I brought the matter to my sire. Hearken to, hearken to his answer now. For a thousand years have I mourned my beloved, who gave her life to forge... A peace thy king betrayed. Such was my lot until the child of Ishgard came unto me. For want of Forbes, she wrapped herself in a dream, yet the world will remember her deeds. For truth she fought, for justice she sinned, for redemption she sacrificed, and came as light. To follow one's heart, to have faith in one's convictions, be it for weal or be it for woe, such is the folly and glory of man. End of dragon. He hath entrusted the choice to us, and we have made it. We will keep faith with you and walk in the light. Then you accept the Emmerich's invitation. Let it be known that I, Vidolfnir, shall journey into Shkard on behalf of my people. 
We are honored to receive your answer. We'll convey your words to our allies without delay. This happening is a wood that you were here to see it. Even as the Scions celebrated the return of a long lost friend, honorable men plotted to deprive them of another. Honorable men, to whom Sir Emmerich was no hero but a scheming patricide. Honorable men who would fain wash the paving stones of foundation with the tyrant's blood. Honorable men whose knife in the dark was the spark which set the city aflame and who sang as it burned. Let us not keep Sir McQueen. We quite well, thank you. Yes, yes, quite well. Uh, forgive me, you have given me a rather lot to digest. This whole affair with the Ashkadi was revenge. And our friends know where to be found. It would seem there is no end to our trouble. We can but face them head on, one at a time. But now we must apply ourselves to our allotted tasks to keep the others. Then the time grade. We found you. They found me. Time we will find Ida and Papalima. And then figure that out. These troubles will soon be but a memory, on which we will look back on together. Pray do not misunderstand. I do not mean to imply that it would be unwise. I merely wish that I, I had rejoined our grand adventurer, one of its most triumphant. Despite my recent accomplishments, the moods here is the same celebration. I have no doubt that we will enjoy many more glorious victories soon enough. That we must rest assured that I will play my part very good. I know you. So then, to the congregation. You have returned. In this, at least, the fates are kind. Greetings, sir, First Commander. It pleases me to inform you that the Dolphineer has accepted Sir Emmerich's invitation. He has. That is glad tidings indeed. But that the Lord Commander were here to hear them. Oh, is he otherwise engaged? I sleep it off a night to the gun. What? What happened? Will he live? 
the, Chitru the Chirurgeons, and it's tell me he, is, he will make a full recovery. I had Lord Edmund and Lord Vittorio not been on hand when the assassin, assassin struck, he would not have been so fortunate. For mercy, they subdued the fiend before he could land the telling blow. The attack was just the beginning, though. Long, Not long after, buildings all around the city, including several of ours, burst into flames. Bastards caught us completely by surprise. They were dousing, we've been dousing the fires, but for every one we put out, it seemed that like two more started up. Casualties are mounting, especially in the broom. It's blamed these fires were started by the assassin's conspirators. Until they have been rounded up, there will be no end to this. Will you help us find them? Let us be at it. Uh, I'm going to call this a good stopping place. Um, and I'll pick this up next week. But, uh, there's stuff I need to do before Bears and Dragons. So stay tuned. Um, 7 o'clock Central Time, 7, 7 30, depending on my players. Keep an eye out. Uh, subscribe to the channel and you should get notifications. Hey guys, that's part one. Dragon Star and Lore will continue this and the inner turmoil conflict of Ishgard, as well as the pending assault of uh, Nidhogg and his uh, dragons now that he's taken over his dimension. Who happens? Wahahaha. <laughs>